Hi, Point Leaders, good to be with you. Uh, the goal of this uh, short little video is to talk to you about how do you lead the daily office each week at each of the Emotionally Healthy Discipleship courses. So again, there's two EH day-by-day -day books, okay? The first one is for the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course. The second one is for the Emotionally Healthy Relationships course. So I found over the years that it's an art form to actually lead a group in the daily office. So do you understand that every week you'll notice in the workbooks, it says you start the session, you welcome everybody, you start with a daily office. So you'll pick one of the offices from the corresponding week. So if it's week one, you'll pick one from week one. If it's week six, you'll pick one from week six. And uh, the challenge is a lot of people will not know what this is all about, this daily office, day-by-day -day thing. And for the first time, they're going to be introduced to silence and, and stillness. And remember, this is the most difficult part of the course. Uh, for people, most challenging part of the course, because very, very few people have a dimension of silence and stillness in their lives. As you remember, each of the sessions begin with two minutes of silence. So what I had to do is I, I, I developed over time, a few years, little introductions of one to three minutes each that I would choose a topic or an angle. That basically, over the eight weeks of a course, I would be teaching about stillness and silence. And so what I've done is I've gathered 13 of my top ones. And I put them in a document that you can download on the website. And it's called, you know, Lead the Daily Office for EH Discipleship Courses. So I want to encourage you to download that uh, and look at it. So, uh, in fact, I'm going to just review it very briefly with you now, but you're going to need to have the document in your hand. So the key is every time your class gathers, you need to think about what am I going to say before we begin the office? Because it's really a key teaching moment. And, uh, and so there is a YouTube video, again, it's on our website, that probably, I think it's five, seven minutes, that actually introduces the daily office. And I would encourage you to mail that to people, either the week before, probably after your first session, so they can watch it. But again, back to the one to three minutes, what do you do? So I've got 13 sessions here. Uh, and you'll notice the first, it says focus on each one. So here, number one, it says the focus of the first time, say we're gathering here, and everyone's sitting in their chairs. I say, okay, pull out you know, your day-by-day -day book, and go with me to day one, midday, evening office, go to page 38. It starts with the scripture reading, 1 Samuel 17. And so I said, before we begin, everybody, let me make a few comments about the stillness and silence. And I always say, listen, I know this is the most difficult part of the course. So I start the first, actually, two sessions of each course, I use the silence and stillness card. And again, you can download this off our website. And I basically review the four guidelines for silence and stillness, and I read them through. I basically, I, I make it normal for people to say, listen, it's okay that your mind's gonna wander. You're gonna find yourself distracted. I do all the time. And so they've been talking about this issue of distractions for 2,000 years. And so here's some helpful guidelines, and I, and I read them through to people. You know, sit down and take a few deep breaths to settle yourself into silence. Choose a very simple prayer to express your openness and desire for God, like Abba or Father. The goal is I wanna be with Jesus, right? And so my mind starts wandering into, I've got to, you know, drop this letter off at the post office. I've got to write some emails. I've got to go shopping. And, oh, yeah. I go, oh, Abba, oh, Father. And I come back to remembering I'm in his presence. And then it says, close your eyes and offer this prayer to Jesus. And every time you find yourself distracted, come back and have a simple prayer like Abba back to Jesus. And the goal is not to be interceding at this time, but to be in a relationship, being with Jesus. Uh, every time I get distracted and being with God. So I, I would encourage you, you use this card the first two weeks to introduce your people to them, to basically 2,000 years of history where how they talk about our minds wandering and being with Jesus. So again, the focus is personal relationship with Jesus. And the core of the course is developing that. And then I would just go into it, you know, two minutes of silence. And I might start the first week with just one minute of silence and uh, then go to two minutes, maybe the second or third weeks. But again, you want to normalize the difficulty. Then the third week, for example, I give you 13 suggestions. You can pick and choose among them what you see fit. And you may want to interchange them as you see fit. You only have eight weeks for each course. So the third focus, I might say to people, listen, our goal is, again, that before we start the office today, you know, we're in week number three or four, you know, go to this page. And now listen, everybody, how many of you feel guilty about your prayer life? And most of them will raise their hands. Because we, when have I prayed enough? And everyone feels like their Bible study and prayer life is never good enough. And I said, that, say, I have good news for you today. Listen, the fact that you show up, God is happy. 
The fact that you're here is wonderful. And the whole purpose of the gospel is grace, that Jesus loves you, he died for you. It's not based on your performance, it's based on his work on the cross and the fact that he loves you. So I said, today, I wanna take you off of living in guilt and shame. And you know, how does God feel about you that he's disappointed and frustrated and anger? No, God's delighted that you're here. His love for you is without any strings. And I just emphasized that one week. And uh, so I said, right, let's relax, okay? And that's my emphasis. Another week, uh, I will talk about perfectionism. That's actually in session four on your sheet. That the goal of the daily office or day by day is not to get through and read every office all five days. It's 10 per week, you know, twice a day for five days. And I basically point out that God is not a perfectionist like we are. It's about, again, it's about grace. So I, I, I say, listen, if I have 10 minutes, uh, say in the afternoon, and here I am, it's, you know, it's time for the uh, midday evening office. First, I want to evaluate, like, where am I right now? What do I need? If I'm super distracted, I probably might need to just start reading the scripture, maybe the devotional, and then I might do silence at the end. Uh, but the goal is to connect with Jesus. The goal is not to get through the whole office. So you may just, you may just get through a few lines, and God may touch you at a certain verse, and you've only got 10 minutes. Well, stop right there. Remember, the goal is being with Jesus, not getting through it all. That may, that's an, be another week. And again, you'll, you'll see some other examples. I, I talk about the FAQs. Each of the offices have 10 frequently asked questions at the end. Another week, I might just refer them to the appendix uh, and say, look at these frequently asked questions. And I may mention a few of them and just read one or encourage them to pick one out that's difficult. Another week, I'll, I'll introduce them to the idea of rhythms. I say one of the goals of these courses is to help you develop a rhythm in your life with God, of being with God, stopping to be with God, so that you remember his presence all through the days. And so the idea of rhythms, you start your day with Jesus perhaps, and maybe you end your day with Jesus. And I, I introduce them actually to something that's in the end, it's called uh, Compline, and uh, where it's talked about at the end your day with Jesus. And it's actually found uh, praying before you go to sleep. And I say to people, do you know what? You can just start your day with Jesus and get a rhythm, and it may be very brief. Maybe you don't have a lot of time. But you can always end your day with Jesus, and right before you close your eyes, with something very simple. Um, and very simple prayer, and some suggestions are given there. And again, just introducing the idea of rhythms. Another time I've used, uh, you'll notice on number eight, I've used it, and uh, I put a picture up there of Rembrandt's painting of the prodigal son that Henry Nouwen made very popular in his book. And I put the painting up, and on the painting, the younger son is leaning his head against the father's chest. And I say, in some ways, every time we're still and silent, it's like we're just leaning our head against the father's chest and receiving his love. And that's, that's it. That's my introduction. So I want to invite you today to just receive his love and imagine yourself leaning your head against the father's chest. It's a great opening. You'll notice something on number 10, distinguishing between exterior silence and interior silence. I say to people, you know, some folks get on a train or a bus and they feel like it doesn't count because there's all this noise externally. And I say, no, no, God's after and the inside that we're still before him. And so many times we can't get the exterior silence, but we still can have the interior silence. And I just, my, my two minute introduction is just distinguishing those two things. So I think you get the idea, but there's 13 suggestions for you here. And I encourage you to add some of your own, but you wanna think about each week before you do that office, you really only have between one and three minutes. Maybe the first week you can take a little bit extra time, but there's not a lot of time. And so you've got to think about what are you going to say and how are you going to say it tightly. And then you want to lead them in the office by setting your clock, you know, two minutes of silence. Then I often say, let's read the scripture out loud together. Then I read the devotional. I read the question. And then maybe I read the prayer at the end. Sometimes I don't. And then we just end with two minutes of silence. And that's it. Even though it's difficult for people, you're, you're holding the silence in the room. And it's a very important spiritual formation time for your group. It's probably the only time anyone's ever done that for them. Okay, so I hope this is helpful to you. God bless you as you dig into those uh, day by days. And uh, blessings to you and uh, enjoy.